So I guess when I was a little kid, I would get into fights all the time, all right? Don't get me wrong, like, I, on the playground, you do what you gotta do. But this is my first real fight. The first time I actually got in a fight with somebody that knew what they were doing. Uh, so I, I was a skater in my youth, you know? I, I rode the skateboards, did the, did the kick flips, that type of thing. And so, most days you could find me at the skate park. And as you guys can tell from the fact that uh, my job is to tell stories and talk crap about people, I, I have a pretty big mouth. And this was especially true at the skate park because most people there I was friends with, and when you're friends with people, you just kind of give them a hard time, talk a little crap, that's what you gotta do. And uh, I, I, I'm really good at talking crap. And I was friendly with basically everybody that would stay at the skate park most nights. I, I knew everyone, we had a friendly retort, they knew that I was just kind of memeing when I was talking crap, so it, it was never really personal. But one day I show up at the skate park right after school, and there's a guy there wearing dad shoes. And this is not now when dad shoes are cool again, I mean there's like Yeezy dad shoes, but <laughs> if you pay $500 for those, you're, you're kind of a tool. Sorry, Steve. And anyways, as I get there, there's a new guy wearing dad shoes there, and I don't recognize him, but I make a joke like, oh, nice shoes. And I, I guess this guy must have been having a really bad day, because he looks at me and goes, what did you just say, bitch? And I'm like, oh, nice shoes, you know, because, like, they're dad shoes. Ha ha. Like, I'm laughing, right? And he goes, yeah, you want to make fun of my shoes some more, bro? And I was like, no, dude, it was just a joke. Like, chill out. And he's like, don't tell me to chill out. And he starts coming over and getting in my face. So at this point, I probably should have realized that this guy is having a bad day. He's not in the mood to be messed with, and I, I should have kept my mouth shut. But me being me, that's not a possibility, all right? Me keeping my mouth shut, never gonna happen. So as he's up in my face screaming at me, keep in mind this is before puberty really struck me. So I'm uh, sitting at a whole 5'3", probably about, I, I, I was kind of chubby, not gonna lie. I don't know how much I weighed, but I'm, I'm a pretty small kid, okay? And this guy is uh, definitely, definitely, definitely not... Not your stereotypical skinny skater guy. He's got some muscle to him. I would say he was probably 16, 17 at this point. And I'm 13, 14. Pretty young, pretty young. So he gets up in my face and starts screaming at me about how how dare I have the balls to come in here and start criticizing his shoes. And like, I was kidding. I did not mean to make this guy so angry, okay? Maybe he's stuck in some dog poop or something. Maybe he was just having a bad day. Maybe he doesn't know how to tie his shoes and his mom had to tie him. Maybe that's why he was self-conscious. I'm not really sure. But this guy was really, really offended that I made fun of his shoes. So so whatever, he's screaming at me, and for some reason while he's screaming at me, I have the bright idea in my head, and by bright idea, I mean really bad idea, to bring up how his breath smells. So as he's screaming at me, asking me how I dare I have the balls to make fun of his shoes, and how he's lucky that my shoe isn't up my ass right now, I just look at him and go, dang man, my bad, the only thing worse than your shoes is your breath. I don't know why I said it, I don't know what went through my mind, it was impulse, okay? I was on the spot and I had to make a funny. But as soon as those words left my mouth, I feel like all the humanity in his eyes just disappeared. Suddenly, he wasn't even talking, like, he wasn't screaming anymore. He just put down his skateboard and was like, alright, we're fighting. And I was like, what? I, <laughs> what do you mean? Because, you know, most of the time when you get in a fight, you kind of see it coming. And like I said, I was really calm. I, I didn't mean anything. Like, I wasn't mad at all. So when he starts getting in the stance ready to fight, I'm like, uh, I, I'm, I'm not, I'm not quite sure what's gonna happen here. So I try to back out of it. I'm like, look, dude, I don't wanna fight. Like, I'm just kidding around. He's like, no, 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 like, we're gonna fight. And I'm like, dude, like, I, I'm not gonna fight you. And he goes, if you don't put your skateboard down right now, I'm going to punch you in the face. And I'm like, dude, just, and as soon as I open my mouth to explain how he's not going to fight me, he just punches me in the side of the face. And like, I, I can take a punch pretty well, okay? That's where this story is going. I can take a hit really, really, really well. It's just uh, in this particular scenario, I, 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 didn't, I didn't hit back, to be honest. So I try to swing back, and I'm really discombobulated after his first punch. He, he hit me really, really hard, all right? I was seeing stars. So I think it, like, hits him, but not very hard, all right? He probably could have, you know, dental flossed his way out of it. And I don't know what's going on, but he hits me again, and I drop to the floor, right? I'm like, dang, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely going to get beat up here. But for some reason, and this is just how I am as a person, whenever I'm getting embarrassed or, like, beat up or anything, I, I just get back up. Like, I'm not the type of person to just get knocked out and, and not get back up. So I get back up, and the kid's like, really? And it hits me again, and I fall back down. So at this point, I've been punched in the face three times. I'm seeing stars, bro. I'm pretty sure I have at least 47 concussions. But for some reason, I get knocked down again, and I, I get back up, and I'm like, oh, dude, you hit like a bitch. Not the right choice. Clearly, he didn't. I don't know why I'm still talking at this point, because I'm getting obliterated. I'm the one on the ground twice now. It's not a good look. So he hits me again, and I go to the floor. Not surprisingly. But for some reason, I get back up, and at this point, the kid's like, what, what are you doing, dude? Like, stay down. So he punches me in the face again. 
and I go to the ground and he goes stay down like I don't want to hit you just stay down but I get back up and he's like dude just like stop like it's not worth it even he's on my side now being like just stop you're, you're losing like this is not worth what you're about to get hit with but I get back up and he punches me again and I drop to the floor and at this point people in the skate park come over they're breaking us up and the guy's like I mean to be honest you're annoying and all but uh, kudos to you for getting back up so much and I'm probably, I, I think, you know, I said something, but in reality, I, I don't know if my tongue was in the back of my throat. I don't know how much brain damage I had sustained at this point, but I doubt anything that I said made any tangible sense whatsoever. So whatever, I decide probably not good to be at the skate park anymore. So I, I go to ride home. I'm like having trouble balancing. I got obliterated, blitzed in front of all my friends. I got the absolute crap beat out of me. You know, it wasn't exactly the best performance for my boxing debut, but that's okay. Things happen, all right? I'm going to be hopping in the ring with Logan Paul in a few weeks now just to uh, practice. You know, I've gotten way better since then. Me and Master Splinter have been down in the sewer working on our Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle skills. So uh, be on the lookout because I'm basically a vigilante now. So as you guys can tell from the title, we're coming back at it again with more stories about the vape god snake lizard guy if, if you haven't seen part one i'll put an annotation on screen now but basically there was this kid i went to middle school with that was actually the weirdest person ever he uh he wanted to be a lizard breeder but not by you know buying two lizards and making them breed but by actually going out in the wild catching the lizards and making them breed because he felt like they had more of a killer instinct you know he would uh grind up bananas and put it in milk and try to sell it in front of school with the name nana milk and was surprised when nobody bought it and on top of already being really weird was was vaping continuously and showed me a snake head. So this kid was definitely one of the weirdest people I've ever interacted with in my entire life. And you guys love the last video so much, I figured I would just uh, tell you guys more of this kid's misadventures because he was just kind of a meme at our school and I have quite a few. So I've decided to give this kid a name, a nickname just to make telling the story easier. So from now on, his name will be Melvin, all right? And Melvin, Melvin was a weird guy. And, and along with being an entrepreneur, he didn't have the best of luck with women, okay? Uh, surprisingly, girls aren't finding at the chance to date a guy who carries around a dead snake head in his backpack. Wild, I know, but if you guys are out there trying to pick up ladies, dead lizards is not the way to do it. In fact, it makes them run away from you. And Melvin, Melvin really wanted to be a ladies man, you know? He was lonely, I guess. I guess his hentai pillow really wasn't enough for him. And he was constantly trying to hit on girls. And by hit on girls, I mean, I, I really don't think he knew how to talk to people. Melvin was notorious for doing two things. First things first, he would go to every girl's social media, like literally every single one of their posts and then comment something weird. Not like, oh, you're cute, or the thing where you like someone's picture and then they like one back and you do that for a few days. Like straight up just stalking them and commenting on posts that were uh, a year old. Which I mean, Melvin, Melvin had balls of steel. I don't know about you, but I would never, ever, ever comment on a post that's like a year old. That's just how you look like a crazy person. And then when the girls wouldn't respond, Melvin would go up to them the next day in person and be like, did you see my comment? And if they said yes, he would ask them for their phone number, but Melvin didn't have a cell phone. No, no, no. You see, Melvin would write down your phone number and then call you off his house phone. But when girls would talk to Melvin on his house phone, they would notice that someone was always listening because Melvin's mom wouldn't let him talk on the phone without supervision. So just imagine trying to put the game on your crush, Ayo hey, baby girl, what you wear, and only to hear Melvin's mother, who named her son Melvin, on the line like, Bah, your dinner's ready. So, uh, M Melvin, Melvin didn't have what we call game. But the best story with Melvin and girls comes from our 8th grade dance. You see, uh, in 8th grade, they were like, oh, you don't bring a date to the 8th grade dance, but everybody basically brought a date because that's just what you do. So everybody was trying to come up with a good way to ask uh, people to the 8th the grade dance, you know? And Melvin, being the lizard entrepreneur he is, decided that the best way to ask a 8th grade girl to the dance would be to, and this is not a joke, take his lizard's shed skin and write dance with it on a poster with glue and, and use it to ask the girl to the dance and if that doesn't show you how absolutely clueless melvin is about girls then um then i don't know what will so melvin takes his sign with his dead lizard skin and walks up to this girl at lunch and, and shows it to her and she just says no and, and melvin proceeds to start crying which not gonna lie rejection sucks but i don't know what melvin expected to happen here okay no girl has ever been like ugh my knight in shining armor is going to pull up, whip out the snake skin, and hit me with it like a bad Fifty Shades of Grey parody, okay? It's just never going to happen. And that was just 8th grade. Melvin and I went to high school together as well, and somehow he got weirder in high school. 
You see, uh, the year was around 2014, so the whole furry tail thing had been out of style for a while, but that didn't stop Melvin, okay? He shows up to freshman year rocking a rainbow tail on the back of his pants. And if you want to express yourself, do whatever, that's fine. I, I swear I just had a seizure. Express yourself is what I meant to say. That's fine. But Melvin had the need to constantly flex the fact that he had this tail. Bringing it up in conversation, swinging it around like I swear the guy would shake his butt when he walked just so this tail would be swinging back and forth the entire time and it, it was just a weird experience so whatever people start to mess with him a little with it because it's just funny to see this guy walking around school with a tail on in 2014 and instead of you know taking it on the chin or stopping to wail the tail holy shit am i having a seizure i can't talk so instead of taking it off, he decides to tell his mom. And his mom was one of these really, really Christian people that was like, bullying is Satan. So of course, Melvin himself in his rainbow tail get us an entire, entire conference in the gymnasium, a whole presentation on why you shouldn't bully people who wear tails. Like as if we're not gonna know exactly where this is coming from. Wow, really? In 2014, you're magically gonna give us a seminar on why not to bully people with tails when there's only one kid in the entire school wearing a tail? And Melvin wanted to play dumb. He's like, oh, I don't know why we're here. Yes, you do, Melvin. It was your mom. Playing dumb doesn't make it simpler. You're the reason that we're all here because you wanted to wear your tail and you couldn't take rid of cool just take off the tail take off the tail melvin is it that difficult ah so so here we are getting lectured all right we're getting lectured and melvin melvin has the guts to say i don't know who this is about but they're probably really brave all right melvin all right buddy chill out melv little old melvin had to be slick but other than you know wearing rainbow tails in high school melvin's luck with girls never got better either there's not a story for that i just wanted you guys to know that this guy never got a girlfriend Ah, uh, until, until his senior year. You see, ladies and gentlemen, there's a little something called, uh, senior freshman relationships, which are just weird. Something about a grown man, basically. Dating a 14-year-old is, is just a little shady, in my opinion. If you're down for it, and, like, you actually have good intentions, that's fine, but usually they don't. And Melvin, Melvin really didn't look like a kid, okay? He never shaved his beard. He was a neck beard. This neck beard was juicy, all right? Imagine Will Ferrell's Jufro. Will Ferrell. Ferrell's? Oh my gosh. Will Ferrell's Jufro, but on a guy's neck. That's what type of neck beard we're working with here, okay? He looks like the type of guy to my lady so hard with seven fedoras on. So here Melvin is dating a freshman at the ripe old age of 18. She's a fresh 14. It's not a good look, and not to mention Melvin looks like a grown man. So a, a couple months into this relationship, the girl realizes that this is kind of a creepy scenario, and they break up. And Melvin, Melvin didn't take the breakup well. You see, he came to school every day, just more disheveled than ever, okay? And it, it wasn't very good to begin with and climaxed and him running into the girl's classroom and begging to get back with her during third period English class and causing a soft lockdown because they thought he had become unhinged. Ah, oh, Melvin. I, I, I'm not really sure what Melvin's up to these days. I, he doesn't have an Instagram. He doesn't follow me anywhere that I know of. But Melvin, if you are watching this, man, feel free to comment because I, I would love to have you on the channel and just talk about your life because you seem like it's pretty interesting. So after he caused the soft lockdown his senior year, he did, uh, he, he did get expelled because, you know, they can't really have a mentally unhinged person running around the school like a maniac like Romeo and Juliet, except, you know, Juliet, no, 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 that's that's about right, because Romeo was an adult and Juliet was like 13. That story really sucked. I don't know why we learned that. Hey, kids, make sure to kill yourself if you um get in love with somebody who's like six years older than you that you've known for two days, secretly get married, and then try to fake your death and run away from your rich family. It's not really a good lesson. I, I don't know why they still teach it to us. Now, I do have a few more stories about Melvin, but I, I don't know if, I, uh, if, if you guys are interested. This is a pretty long video. It's nearing, what, the nine-minute mark now, just from the raw recording I have. So I don't really know how this is gonna end up, but... But, um, yeah, I, I'm gonna end it with the cake of Melvin stories, all right? You might be thinking, what possibly gets better than dating a girl so much younger than you and then having a freak out and causing a soft lockdown in a school? And let me tell you, folks. You see, Melvin also, before he left, wanted to do a senior prank, and he just, he wanted to go hard, all right? That, that's what she said. So, Melvin decided that the best way to do a senior prank was to do the old classic and try to lead a cow up the stadium bleachers into, like, the observer box. One problem, we live in Las Vegas, and no one knew where to get a cow, especially somebody like Melvin. You see, Melvin was not the sharpest tool in the shed, as you can tell from the story. So, Melvin decided that instead of getting a cow and leading it up there, and the whole prank being, 
um, you know, that they can't get it down. Instead, Melvin decided that the prank had nothing to do with the inconvenience and more of the fact that there was a giant chunk of meat in the press box, which makes no sense. That's not a funny prank, Melvin. I'm, I'm not really quite sure what you were going for. So Melvin decided to head on over to our local supermarket, which had a deli in it, and buy basically a cow's worth of meat, you know? Now, you might be thinking that must have cost a lot of money, and, and that's right. I'm not quite sure where he got the money, probably from his days and days of selling lizards, I guess. So Melvin buys basically a whole cow's worth of bloody raw meat meat and decides to go into the press box and just drop it. One problem, in Las Vegas, it's about 100 degrees until the end of August, and he did this right at the start of our senior year. So imagine, basically a cow's worth of meat just sitting in a prep box, press, prep box, press box, in 100 degree weather for about three days before anybody noticed, and by the time they did notice and opened it, it had smelled so bad, and the maggots had infested the meat so much that they had to call in a biological unit to dispose of it. Real good senior prank, Melvin. <laughs> Getting the school shut down because of biological warfare, basically. What, what a god, what a stan. Now, as you guys know, Chick-fil-A is the place of a lord, okay? There's three holy places on the planet. There's a church, there's this YouTube channel, and there's Chick-fil-A. The three places where God shows up the most. Uh, you know, my channel's where he kicks back and relaxes, kicks off his shoes, and has a good time, obviously. But Chick-fil-A's pretty up there, alright? It's, it's a holy place, you know? You don't do bad things in a Chick-fil-A. But this story is, is a, is a, is a ne'er-do-well tale of somebody that did something really bad in a Chick-fil-A. Or should I say two people that did something really bad in a Chick-fil-A. Whenever I go to get fast food, I never expect to get a WWE boxing match, some John Cena versus Manny pacquiao S type of action. But that's exactly what I got when I was at Chick-fil-A one day when I was in college. You know, the, the, the six months I was in college. At our college, we had a Chick-fil-A Express. So if you ever wanted to get through Chick-fil-A a little faster, you had, you had Express next to the name. That, that was really the only difference, like it was never actually faster. Basically, there's no tables, you just stand in line, you get your food, and you leave. Uh, but, I, but I guess these people just weren't the best of friends, and they were standing a little too close together in line, because I'm at the back of the line, and these people in the front start kind of getting a little loud, telling each other, No, you get out of line! No, like, yeah, no, no, ex explicitive words? Explicit? Exp explicit? Explo explo exploitive? I don't- Bad words! They were saying bad words. I swear, sometimes I talk like a dyslexic bunny rabbit. So here they are, swearing in Chick-fil-A Express on campus, all right? And I start to pay a little bit more attention, because I don't know about you, but I'm super nosy, and if someone's fighting, I want to know everything about it, because that's just the type of person I am. So as I'm listening, they start to get a little bit more heated, all right? They're yelling at this point, not very nice things, and they're both like, No, dude, I'm not getting out of here. You need to get out of here. You're the one with the problem. It's not my fault that you're causing all these issues at Chick-fil-A. No one wants to hear this, da 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 And then one pushes the other one. And ladies and gentlemen, when this push went down, it was like when the American Revolution shot was fired, alright? The shot heard around the world. There was no more games playing, alright? The other guy pushed him back, and it was something out of a middle school fight, you know? I went to a school in Utah, so just imagine two really white Mormon dudes throwing fisticuffs. That's exactly what you should be imagining. So these two white dudes start pushing each other back and forth, not really fighting, like, more just angrily, eh, no, you're gay, no, you're gay, eh, and, like, pushing back and forth. It was, it was pretty lame. But nonetheless, here we are. And so I kind of step out of the line to get a better view of it, because, <laughs> I'm not missing an opportunity to watch a fight. But then, things start to get heated. You see, one of them decides pushing's not enough. No, 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 no. Mormon pushing? That's too easy. He rears back and throws a punch, a right hook, and as it connects, crack! No nothing really happens. It wasn't really that good of a punch. I mean, it hit him, but, like, it, it probably hurt as bad as getting a hit with a marshmallow puff, all right? So the other guy's like, oh my gosh, and he swings back, and now they're just swinging. And by swinging, I mean, you, you ever seen weird emo kids in a mosh pit, like a punk rock concert? Everyone's just kind of flailing their arms around, like, sometimes somebody gets hit, but it's not really like there's a plan or a strategy, it's just more of like flailing like a dead catfish. So at this point, the entire line is paying attention, okay? You don't fight in front of a Chick-fil-A and not get a reaction pulled out of everyone. So everybody's cheering them on, <laughs> probably not the best idea, like now that I think about it, we were terrible people, we're like, kill him, rip out his jugular, <laughs> whatever, I, I guess when people fight at Chick-fil-A, that, <laughs> that's a pretty standard reaction. So whatever, here we all are cheering on these two buffoons fighting each other in front of Chick-fil-A, and the workers start to like try to break it up, hey, hey, you know, stop it, knock it off, and I don't understand why people People do that. If there's two grown men fighting and you think that just being like, hey, don't do that is gonna work, you're just delusional. It's never gonna work. They're clearly mad enough to be punching each other in the face. You think they're gonna be like, ah, oh, you're right, man. That is quite unreasonable of us to be punching each other. Maybe we should not do this. They're just gonna keep swinging on each other. So the entire, entire courtroom or lunchroom, not lunch, lunch, food court, food court, not courtroom. We're not in prison yet. 
I mean, maybe eventually, you never know. Sh sh stuff changes pretty quick around here. So the security comes up and they're like, all right, guys, break it up, break it up. And they're breaking each other up. They have the guys split up and, and no one's really, you know, like knowing what to say at this point. Security has these two angry dudes who are just fighting over a Chick-fil-A sandwich separated. And they start going off. And of, of course, their names are Brad and Kyle. Like you just had to pick the most stereotypical white dude names of all time. Like whatever, Kyle, dude, like I don't even care, bro. Like whatever, dude, like, it's not even that big of a deal, dude. You just had to swing on me, dude. Oh my gosh. Something about white dudes fighting. Is just always gonna be the most entertaining thing to me. So, of course, the cops break it up. The security guard cops, I don't know what they were. They had handcuffs, all right? That's what matters. The guys are handcuffed. They're being split up. They're getting taken to the little security room that we had on campus. And, of course, you know, the, the rest of the people in line are kind of like, dang, that was wild. But me? No, no, no. The fight was over. Entertainment was over. Now it's back to Chick-fil-A. So I get to the front of the line. I order my eight nuggets with the side of Chick-fil-A sauce and a Coke. You know how it be. Waffle fries on deck as well. And then I make my fry sauce. I eat that shiz right there, right then, knowing Dang good and well, that's the most entertaining thing that I'm going to see all day is these two grown men fighting over Chick-fil-A. And yeah, I, I, I never found out why they were fighting. All I know is that they fought in Chick-fil-A line. And you never fight in Chick-fil-A. That's just disrespectful, okay? So, uh, yeah, moral of the story, if you're ever in line and people start fighting, remember it, because that way you can tell a story about it later on YouTube on your second channel when you're famous on your main channel for making fun of other people, and then you can, uh, entertain people with it. It's a, it's a weirdly specific lesson, and normally there's a better moral, but, um, yeah, that, that's literally the moral, okay? Uh, in fact, if somebody does cut you in line in Chick-fil-A, you shouldn't fight them in Chick-fil-A, but meet them in the parking lot with a tire iron and, uh, settle business that way. So uh, this story takes place when I was a sophomore in high school. No big deal. It was just the most confusing, weird year of my entire life, okay? It was basically the plot of a romantic comedy. Every single turn, I was constantly getting my heart shattered by some random girl. And this time was no exception, okay? Except this time was the L of the century. I'm talking a rice gum level L. You ever had your girlfriend stolen by the weird emo kid that, like, sniffs glue in the corner and listens to My Chemical Romance so loud that people in the next classroom can hear it? Because um, that, that's exactly what happened to me, okay? And I'm still, to this day, upset over how big this L was. I was dating this girl for a while. I would say like two or three months at this point. And things were going okay. I liked her. I mean, I wasn't like super attached, but you know, it was a relationship and I obviously cared about her. And in my head, I thought everything was going fine, okay? I'm a nice guy. I'm handsome. You know how it is. Raccoon gang for life. And so I figured that there was nothing to be worried about. There was nothing that would really put our relationship on the rocks because we didn't really have any issues. But uh, as the relationship progressed a little bit, she started to get really close with this weird emo kid. And I mean like the type of kid that raw XDs in the Discord chat, okay? And, and I've, I've always loved emo-ish music. Like, punk rock is definitely my favorite type of music. I'm not talking just about a kid that's into that music, okay? I'm talking this is the type of kid that sits in the corner and always is like, uh, my life is like a draining swamp. There's no Shrek in it. I, I, don't, I don't know what that was, but basically this man is the type of dude to cry over Shrek 3, okay? And that's the worst Shrek. And she starts getting really close with him. But I'm like, ah, no threat there, okay? This dude clearly is a potato. There's, there's no reason why I should be worried about this in my relationship. But then things start, start to get weird. She starts going to him with problems about our relationship and fellas if you're ever in a relationship and she starts to have a guy best friend she complains to about you that's a sign that you better run okay and I mean run faster than Usain Bolt in the Olympics okay so anyways they keep getting closer she's telling him about all of our problems and I'm starting to get uncomfortable I'm starting to think there might be more to this story okay so one day we get in a fight and I basically tell her like I don't like emo kid I think he's weird I think he's into you and, and I don't like the fact that you're constantly telling him about our problems which I think is pretty fair and she promises me oh Oh no, emo kid's just a friend, ha ha ha. And like I said, this dude was weird. He probably ate glue. Actually, no, I did see him eat glue. We were in art class together. He was that weird, okay? He was a glue-eating emo kid that RAR XDs. I didn't think it was gonna be bad. But anyways, after I have this conversation with my girlfriend about how I don't like emo kid, the next day, he walks up to me at lunch and is like, don't you dare try to ruin my friendship. She's the only friend I have left, da 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 da. I can't believe you would say that. And I'm like, listen, bro, I don't, I don't have anything personal against you. I don't like you, but like, no beef. I don't want to fight you or anything, but I just don't like how close you are with my girlfriend. Like, that's fine. You guys want to be friends? That's cool. But you constantly hearing about our relationship issues, I'm just not cool with because I don't know you, right? And he starts like growling at me. I mean, growling. The emo kid is growling at me at lunch. You know how weird it is to have this emo kid growling at you because you said you don't like that your girlfriend talks to him about her problems? So here I am getting growled at by a Hot Topic poster, bro. I don't know what's going on. And he's like, I'm gonna make sure that you guys break up. I won't let her date you. Rah, 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 rah. And I'm like, bro, 
You are so angry. Please stop growling, first of all. Second of all, brush your teeth. Your voice smells. Your voice smells. Your breath smells. That's what I meant to say. It was all just, it was all just, ugh. It was a mess, okay? So this kid's clearly angry. I got an angry emo kid on me now, bro. And I'm kind of nervous, because this is the type of weird emo kid that's gonna, like, try to sacrifice my soul to Satan without my permission, okay? And at this point, I'm about to break up with my girlfriend, because if she's gonna be with weird emo kid who's gonna threaten and growl at me over lunch, then I, I, I just, I just don't want to deal with it. So, anyways, things calm down for a little bit, and that weekend, I get a Snapchat from one of my friends, and he goes, Yo, your girlfriend's here holding hands with Emo Kid. And sends me a Snapchat, and they're like walking around the mall, holding hands, being flirty and stuff. And at this point, I'm like, oh my god. Weird, growling Emo Kid just stole my girlfriend. This is no meme, this is DEFCON 1 situation. I just got swagger jacked by a kid who drinks highlighter ink. What is going on? So I call her and I'm like, what are you doing? And she's like, oh, nothing. I'm like, no, no, no. Like, I know. I know what's up. The gig is up. I know you're cheating on me with emo kid. And she's like, oh, he just understands me and da da da. I think we're better, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, you could have just broken up with me. You know, like, if you want to date emo kid, that's that's totally cool, bro. Like, whatever. I, I don't care. You do you. I'm not pressed about the breakup. But, like, you didn't have to go around holding hands with him at the mall, okay? And then he takes the phone and is like, bro, don't talk to her. You know that da 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 da. And I'm like, all right, all right, listen, angry emo kid. First of all, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Sorry that you like think that I have some massive issues with you. I don't. I knew there was some suspicious stuff going on. That's why I didn't like you. And you just confirmed all my suspicions. So I was right to not like you all along. And at this point, he's probably growling at me some more. Rah, rah, some weird emo XD stuff. And I'm like, whatever, whatever. I don't really care about the relationship much at this point. If you want to cheat on me with emo kid, you're more than welcome to. Like, I'm done. I'm over this. I broke up with her. And uh, they ended up dating for like two months before they broke up. And emo kid wrote a bunch of emo songs about it. And um, yeah, moral of the story is uh, if your girlfriend's ever besties with an emo kid, then she's probably cheating on you. And uh, you're going to get swagger jacked by an angry emo kid. That's the L. That's the biggest L of my life. But uh, surprisingly, that's not the only run-in I had with this particular emo kid in high school. A couple years later, we had another issue. So, um, you know what? I'll make you guys a deal. If this video gets 5,000 likes, we'll talk about part two. And, and in which the angry emo kid and I um, got, got into it a little bit. <laughs> So, uh, there was a teacher that I had in high school, and for the purpose of this story, we're gonna call him, uh, Mr. Sukumana. Sukumana was a very interesting teacher, and by interesting, I mean I hated him. He was definitely one of the biggest jerks I've ever met in my entire life. You can just tell by the way his face looked that he hated his life and everything he had ever done with it. Like, definitely, definitely made some terrible decisions. He would tell us that he would have gone pro in soccer if he wouldn't have hurt his knee, but I, I, I don't believe that for a second, because Mr. Sukumana seemed like the type of person that no one would want to work with, especially on his professional sports team. But regardless, he was a pretty miserable guy and would spend most days uh, taking out his anger on us, you know? giving us massive amounts of homework, not letting us have any fun. Like, if you laughed in his classroom, he would actually try to send you to the dean's office. So he was not a nice guy. But this story is a time where Sukumana really made me laugh, you know? He made me giggle like a little schoolgirl. Uh, there was this other kid in my class that I liked almost as little as Mr. Sukumana. And his name for this story is going to be Jeremy, because I feel like Jeremy is just a good name to make fun of. And Jeremy, you know, uh, w was the type of kid that uh, was convinced that school was useless for him because he really knew how to sell weed. A and one day he was going to be a CEO because he sold drugs to high school kids. A and just was disrespectful to everybody, you know, like acted like he was uh, the coolest kid to ever exist and that nobody would ever have to listen to him. So one day we're sitting in, in this class, you know, and Mr. Sukmana is going off and uh, Jeremy starts rattling off about how this is stupid and he's never going to need it, anything like that. And Mr. Sukmana, instead of just doing his usual routine of being like, Jeremy, please shut up. No, 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 I don't know if Mr. Sukmana was having a bad day or what, but he turns around and he goes, Jeremy, listen. I know you think that you have a bright future ahead because you sell drugs or whatever, but listen, man, no one's ever going to hire you. You are actually the most unintelligent student I've had in nearly 25 years of teaching, and if it were up to me, I would expel you now because it's not like you're going to graduate anyways. So maybe, instead of bashing what I'm teaching you, understand that your life is going to be in shambles and you're going to wish that you could go back to high school when you were at your peak. And you know when something hurts and it's like, it's so true, you don't even have a comeback, you know? Like when people say that I'm desperate for views, so I have to clickbait my life. Yeah, 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 you know, like it's it hurts so badly that you can just sit there and silence slack jawed. That's what Jeremy's face is doing right now. Just the, oh my God, I don't even know what to say because it's so true, it hurts face. That That's what I'm seeing. And the entire class is just dead silent. And then I start laughing because I'm like, oh, th this is, this is good. This is some comedic gold we got going on right here. 
And Mr. Suckamana goes, why are you laughing, Ryan? And I'm like, I don't know, that was just funny. And he goes, yeah, well, I don't think it was. I need both of you to go to the Dean's office. And I'm like, ah, oh, come on, bro. Like, I just giggled at the fact that Jeremy just got game ended by you. And you're going to send me to the Dean's office? I'm providing moral support for you, Mr. Suckamana. But whatever, I get to the, I get up, I start going to the Dean's office. But Jeremy isn't having it, no, 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 no. He's, he's trying to come back from this. He's like, I just got roasted. My pride has been challenged. I have to, I have to try to flame back. So Jeremy gets up and instead of just keeping his mouth shut and walking to the Dean's office after getting absolutely absolutely obliterated by a 55 year old man he decides to fly her back and goes yeah well at least i don't hate my job and and mr suckamana ain't having that no 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 mr suckamana turns around and goes jeremy you don't have a job you're unemployed the only money you get is from selling weed to kids too stupid to understand that you're a terrible salesman and i guarantee you after high school none of them will have anything to do with you because they're all going to go and do something with their lives and Jeremy, Jeremy just got bodied, all right? I swear, 6 9 was somewhere in the club singing, Scum Gang, towards Mr. Suckamana with the absolute fire that was coming out of his mouth, all right? Like 21 Savage became American at Mr. Suckamana roasting this kid that hard. And Jeremy just kind of looks down and goes, whatever, bro, like, you're just a hater. Which is just the weakest comeback, you know? A at least have an argument. You could have been like, wow, you know, you lash out at your students because you're dramatically unhappy with your life. Would have been a better comeback than you're a hater. Because when somebody says, oh, you're just a hater, y you know they have no comeback. That that's just the truth of the matter. So whatever, he sends us both to the dean's office, we get up there, uh, they, they go, oh, who are you from? We say Mr. Suckabana, and they usually just send us back to class because it's just, uh, he, he sends us there so often for stupid things, they're kind of just like, hang out here for 20 minutes and then go back and say that we gave you detention. Because he's just that, <laughs> that petty when it comes to reporting people for stuff. So whatever, we're, we're sitting there, you know, and, uh, and, and, and Jeremy kind of like, you know, is trying to act all tough, like he ain't upset, but I can tell, man, that, that one hit deep. His ego was bruised after those words. So, uh, yeah, moral of the story, don't get into a flame war with somebody that has nothing to lose because they won't hold back, and trust me, you're going to look dumb. Uh, I don't know what Jeremy's up to these days, probably still trying to sell drugs to high schoolers even though he's like 24 years old. He got held back a few times, you know? So, you know, I, I've had my fair share of weird experiences. I've lived a pretty interesting life, all things considered. Mainly because, um, I don't know, I, I guess weird things like to happen to me. I'm not sure why I think weird people are just attracted to me in one way or another, and this is one of those times. Basically, a weird weeaboo kid, like, wanted to fight me when I was in college because the girl that he had a crush on had a crush on me. Uh, overall, I rate the experience a 3 out of 10. He kind of smelt like body pillow and pig sweat. But it's whatever it is what it is, and I figured it'd be an entertaining story for you guys. So without further ado, let's get into it. So my, my first year of college was pretty uneventful, okay? I absolutely hated it. I hated going to class. I hated doing everything. But I had a, a, a lot of good friends, okay? I guess you could say I'm a social butterfly. Something about being an outspoken guy who uh, has no filter. I guess it makes people want to be friends? I don't really know. And I, I was friends with quite a few people. And, you know, being the charming, charismatic, handsome, beautiful raccoon that I am, uh, a few of these friends ended up developing a crush on me. Nothing I can do about it. I can't control these things. You know, I was just living life, being in college. I never really had plans to, you know, uh, uh, date anybody, I guess. I was just doing me, you know, doing my thing. But whatever, a few of the girls that I was friends with had a crush on me, and it was no big deal, it was just kind of awkward at times. But I guess to some people, it, it was a little deeper than that, okay? It was the most dangerous, fantastical threat they've ever had. Me, 6'2", 160 pounds, was the greatest threat to society that they had ever seen, and I needed to be smited off the planet like a bug. So one day, I'm hanging out with a few of my friends, one of which has a crush on me, and she tells me that there's this weird dude on her floor that's like super into anime, okay? We're talking body pillow, collections, trying to learn Japanese just to, you know, uh, flex the fact that he was super into anime, I guess. And whatever, if you want to watch anime, that's all you. Like, no hard feelings, do you, boo-boo. Like, you know, I I'm, I'm not too pressed about it. Live your life, do whatever you want to do. But the guy was super into anime and definitely what I would call a weeaboo. He was 100% a weeb. And like I said, uh, it's not a big deal if you're a weeaboo. Like, if that's really what you want to do, do you, you know? I I'm not too pressed about it. The thing that this kid did that really decided to, you know, piss me off was he started to creepily obsess over this girl. I'm talking waiting in the main lobby of the dorm room for when she would come home so we could ask her to hang out. He would knock on her door constantly asking if she could talk to him. He found her number and found her on Twitter and would just DM her and text her constantly. She ended up having to change her phone number so that way the guy would leave her alone. He was just a stage one creeper and when she went to the school about it, they were kind of like, oh well, he hasn't done anything violent or threatened any violence so there's not much we could do. 
too, which I think is crazy, bro. If you're getting stalked by a weeaboo, the school should do something, but they didn't. So she comes to me and goes, look, you know, I, I think he might back off if I say that I have a boyfriend. So can I just tell him that you're my boyfriend and, and we'll see if it makes him leave me alone? And my friend was super stressed out about it. And I mean, who wouldn't be okay? Imagine Otaku over here staring through your window with those anime eyes like, Senpai, Skooka, you could do it now, yo, Kyorito. Yeah, that, that would freak me out too, okay? I'd be a little bit spookied. So I'm like, yeah, whatever. I mean, if you think it might help your problem and the kid will leave you alone if he thinks you have a boyfriend, of course, go for it. Be like, damn, man, we're getting married tomorrow. Like, whatever you have to do to get this kid to leave you alone is fine because I don't like my friends being stalked by sweaty body pillow boys, okay? This is sweaty body pillow boys. That's a new definition, but I think I'm gonna start using it constantly. From now on, anyone that stalks my friends is a sweaty body pillow boy that needs some help. Slightly misguided, a little bit confused, but oh well, we'll use it as a term from now on. So she goes back and the next day, homeboy's waiting for her in the lobby like a creepy dog with an obsession with uh, someone that's not his owner. She goes, hey, you know, I, I appreciate it. I appreciate the flattery, but I have a boyfriend. And from what I've been told, I wasn't there for the situation. The look in his eyes immediately goes, you know, and like, the anime characters are about to go Super Saiyan and it does the close-up of their eyes and it's all bloodshot and they're like, huh? huh? I have been challenged? My honor has been destroyed? Yeah, something like that, okay? She could see, she could tell in his eyes that he was definitely not too happy with the fact that she had a, um, air quote, boyfriend here, all right? Uh, but it is what it is. He goes, oh, okay, I, I understand, you know, I just thought I was doing the honorable thing by, you know, trying to court you and win you over. And who says that? Who says that in 2018? Yeah, I thought I was doing the honorable thing by waiting for you to get home creepily in the lobby so I could tell you everything about anime and, you know, just talk your ear off. That's not courting, bro. What? what for, first of all, what is courting? Second of all, stalking someone isn't courting, all right? That's, that's just not what you do when you really want to take them on a date. Not once has a girl ever been like, ugh, I would date you, but you don't wait for for me to come home enough and knock on my door constantly and get my phone number from people, all right? Ugh. You're just really not making enough of an effort. No one ever thinks that, ever. Just, if you're a guy, no girl wants to be stalked. It's not something that goes through their mind on a daily basis. But whatever, I guess this guy's pride was a little hurt, because instead of just taking it like a man and being like, all right, the girl that I like is with somebody else, you know, it's time to back off. He decided that no, 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 no. He would do everything in his power to find out who her boyfriend was and uh, uh, challenge me to a duel for her honor. I'm telling you, dude, this guy thought we were living in an anime, okay? So he starts asking around everybody he knows, being like, hey, do you know who she's dating? And of course, we're not actually dating, so everybody just says no. So he starts just waiting, right? He starts just sitting in the lobby where we would hang out and just waiting for something to happen. So one day, we're sitting in the lobby, just hanging out, doing our thing, right? I think we were playing, like, Cards Against Humanity or something, just doing a, a normal hangout session, all right? Nothing wild going on. And here comes Mr. Otaku in a karate robe, okay? A karate Body robe down the stairs into the lobby of the dorm and as soon as he walks in the girl goes oh god and I look up and I see it and, and I crack a smile right and he walks me to the group and he goes who is uh, let me make up a name for her Samantha's boyfriend who is Samantha's boyfriend and we're all smiling and I, I don't remember exactly like I'm not like oh yes that's me this is my pretend role we're all giggling and he goes who is Samantha's boyfriend and she goes he is and she points at me and I first of all Samantha I didn't have to pretend to date you okay snitching me out to the kid in the karate robe was not the cool thing to do all right I mean, damn, if that's how it's gonna be, how am I ever supposed to deal drugs with you, alright? You're gonna snitch me out first thing, cops are gonna walk in immediately, you're gonna be like, it was Ryan! I, I can't live like that, way to go, Sam, I thought I had your back, you know, but it's whatever, it's fine, I guess I'll deal with it. I know who you are now, you're a fake friend. So he walks up to me and goes, I'm challenging you to a duel for her honor. And I'm like, alright, gee, um, first of all, I, I don't know what you mean by duo, like, are we gonna slap each other with salmon or something? I, I don't know. And he goes, no, 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 we're gonna fight. And in my head, here's what I'm thinking. Listen, listen, listen. I wouldn't call myself a feminist, all right? I, I think men and women are equal, but sometimes I think the feminist movement gets a little wild and zany. Uh, but but one thing I definitely believe is that I don't own women, all right? If you're not gonna fight me for her honor. If a girl wants to be with you, then she wants to be with you. I don't own her honor. I don't own her at all. So for you to assume that just because you beat me in a fight, you magically get to date this girl is like super, super sexist. So I, I kind of tell him, look, dude, I don't own the girl. If she wants to be with you, then she would be with you. Like, it's not my problem that you can't get the girl, okay? Like, yeah, fighting me is not going to solve your problems. She still doesn't find you attractive because if she did, she'd date you. And I guess this really sets him off. He goes, no, 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 we're going to duel for it. I'm like, okay, well, what is a duel, dude? Like, uh, Yu-Gi-Oh cards? Pokemon? What's the dealio? Like, you want to get my 3DS? I don't know. And he goes, no, I want to fight you. And I'm like, I'm not, I'm not going to fight you, bro. First of all, you look like a weirdo in your karate robe. I can smell the body pillow sweat 
sweat dripping off of you. Second of all, I don't own the girl. There's nothing I can do to force a girl to date you. This is not my fault. And I guess this really sets him off. And he's like, Aah! and he goes and he tries to swing at me. And I'm like, bro, what are you doing? Why are you doing this? Please do not swing on me with your gross weeaboo hand. By the way, it's not that weeaboos are gross, all right? It's just that um, this, this kid never showered. I don't know. Maybe he thought it was boosting his power level or that like his man stent stink bo smell would like attract women i don't know but it was not a pleasant experience okay smelling this kid was a lot like i don't know sniffing farts it was just not not fun but whatever here's this kid swinging on me because i won't fight him for the honor of a girl that i'm not dating that i don't own and he thinks he's looking savage, all right? He had the karate robot, and I think in his head, the punches he's throwing are like the most beautifully formed arcs that are gonna nail me in the forehead. When in reality, he's just kind of flailing his arms around like a dead fish. And as you know, I've told stories on the channel before, I can't really fight, but in, this is the one instance in my life where I knew I could just beat this kid like a pulp. But I, I don't want to hurt him because clearly I think there's a, a deeper issue at play here. And I don't really want to touch him either. Like, I don't want to pin this kid to the ground and have to hold him there. Are you kidding me? Then I got to smell otaku for the next hour? No, thank you. So I decided, I'm like, all right, I'm just going to hit him once. I'm just going to hit him once. Maybe maybe he'll back off because this way the solution is uh, <laughs> he'll leave. And and everyone's here, they're all watching it, so I got witnesses to say that I'm, I was not trying to hurt the kid at all. So I went back and I hit him once, and it, I don't think I punched him really hard, okay? I don't really have muscles, but I don't know what it was, but this kid breaks down into tears and starts crying. He goes, okay, stop, and runs away. And, and we hear, like, his door to his dorm room slam. And we're like, what is going on, right? But I guess other people in the lobby saw the entire thing too. And, and the girl was like, okay, I think I finally have enough on him to report him to the dean's office and, and get this situation handled. Because now it's not like he's just waiting for me. He's trying to challenge people to a duel for my hand in marriage or something. Like it's 19, uh, what, 22 in Japan? I don't know. I, I don't really don't know much about Japanese culture. If anything I've said has been offensive, that's my bad. But whatever. So we go to the dean's office and like everybody who's there says, yeah, he walked up and tried to uh, challenge Ryan here to a fight for this lady's honor and Ryan just hit him back after he was hitting Ryan and like uh, he, he cried and ran to his room and uh, they put out a protection order he couldn't talk to her for the rest of the year they didn't make a move out or anything which is crazy to me because this dude was clearly clearly not all right uh, but but I guess it is what it is she stopped getting harassed I got to punch a weeaboo and I got this story out of it moral of the story um don't try to fight people for a woman's honor in 2018 2019 or, or any year you're just weird guys don't own women and uh it's not my job to uh, fight for their honor second of all don't fight me all right because one time i punched a weeaboo so hard he cried <laughs> not to flex or anything but i am kind of a big deal definitely out here with the biggest muscles in the game So I've witnessed my fair share of fights, okay? I went to a public high school. That means most kids are throwing fist to cuffs like boxers in the end of the round, all right? Logan Paul KSI type stuff. And this is the dumbest fight that I've ever seen. These two guys literally tried to kill each other over a chair. No, that's not a joke. They actually beat each other over the fact that they couldn't get chairs in the lunchroom and someone stole the chair from somebody else. It's pretty stupid, but it's a good story, so I figured I'd tell you guys. So sit back, relax, grab your popcorn, and get ready to listen to a fantastic story. So I sat at a lunch table for most of high school where me and my homeboys would, you know, grab our chairs, fly over to the table, and have a good time, goof off, do some water bottle flips, all the cool stuff kids do these days, you know. Water bottle flipping is a professional sport in seven countries. And uh, we had this one friend named Patrick who was huge, okay? I'm a pretty tall guy. I'm like 6'2", 6'3", I I'm not really sure. And this guy would tower over me, all right? He probably weighed about 250 pounds of pure muscle and was at least 6'6". This guy was a giant, okay? And he would always come to lunch a little bit late, but he'd always have no problem holding a chair or grabbing a chair because who's gonna argue with the guy that could literally punch a skyscraper and it starts to lean, bro? The Leaning Tower of Pisa happened because Patrick leaned on it, all right? So generally, nobody would mess with him because he was huge, and he was probably the biggest kid in the school, so it was just like a mutual respect thing. But one day, there's a new kid, and he claims to be, you know, a gangster, all right? Oh, I grew, I grew up in the hood, man. All right, well, listen here, Abercrombie and bitch. No, no way you grew up in the hood. You're not hard. You're not cool. Like, no one's impressed by you. But he really wanted everybody to think that he was the toughest guy in the school. So one day, he gets to lunch before Patrick and takes a chair, the last chair, and then just walks across the cafeteria with it, sets his backpack on it, puts his feet on it, and has two chairs. And so we're all like, oh my god, he's trying to fight Patrick, the biggest kid in the school, 
and he's like trying to start it over a chair. This is this is the dumbest thing I've ever seen. So Patrick gets to lunch and goes, hey, is there any chairs? And so we point and we're like, well, that's the only one left and he's using it as a footrest. And Patrick was a gentle giant. He would never like fight anything, but you know, if, if you pissed him off good enough, he would definitely get a little angry. So he goes over there to the new guy and he says, hey man, like I see you're using the chair as a footrest. Can I, can I please have the chair? Like clearly it's a footrest for you. That's not really cool. Can I have it? And the kid just goes, nah, man, uh, F you. Oh, I almost said it. Susan, Susan, listen, it was a joke. Please don't demonetize me. So Patrick just goes, all right, dude, like, listen, I tried to be nice. And he just takes the chair, flicks the kid backpack off, and then just brings it back to our table. So we think problem solved. The kid's not going to instigate it any further because that'd be a terrible idea because once again, this is a giant. So Patrick sits down and starts eating his pizza. And all of a sudden, the kid who he took the chair from runs up and hits him in the back of the head with a binder and starts punching him in the back of the head saying that he's disrespectful and how dare he take his chair and da 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 da. And our entire table is like, what is going on? And before any of us can get up and go help Patrick, Patrick has stood up looming over this kid who's probably a solid 5'6", I, I don't know, like a quarter of his weight. So before before we can react, our friend Patrick has this kid in a headlock on the floor and is like, knock it off. And this kid is just like, swinging at him. It's not hurting Patrick at all because once again, this kid's in a headlock. There's not much momentum behind anything he's doing. He's spinning in the air, hoping it lands on Patrick, saying that he's going to kill him. All over a chair, by the way. So the deans come over, and as soon as, like, the adults are there, Patrick lets go of the kid. He gets up and starts trying to throw chairs at Patrick, spinning at him, all this stuff. And Patrick's just laughing, which is making the kid more mad, because I guess when you're in a murderous rage, people laughing at you is not the reaction you want. And everyone's laughing at him because he just got headlocked in 13 seconds flat, read like a little banshee, and then just got dropped. So whatever, you know, <laughs> they, they get him out of there, toothbrush angry kid who's like, Ree, I'm gonna kill you, Ree! And Patrick, instead of, you know, getting angry or, like, going to the Deans, just sits back down and keeps eating his pizza like the absolute savage he is. So for the rest of uh, the school year and the rest of our high school experience, the kid that tried to, you know, murder someone over a chair was made fun of relentlessly because saying, I'm gonna kill you and spitting in somebody's face over a lunchroom chair definitely doesn't make you look cool like you're from the hood, which I think was his intention. It makes you look like an insecure little girl, which is not a good look, not a good look. And Patrick became a legend for just putting someone in a headlock that was trying to murder him and then going back to eating his pizza like nothing happened. Even the deans and, like, our principal staff were laughing at the fact that he was so calm after it all went down. He wasn't mad, he didn't have to be restrained, he was just like, Okay, I guess the guy that wants to kill me is gone now, do to do back to my pizza. Patrick really was a cool guy. He, I, don't, I don't know what he's up to now, I think he joined the military or something, but whatever he's doing, he's, he's a really good dude and I hope everything's going great for him. So when my brother turned 12, he had a huge birthday party and invited all these kids over to the house. And, you know, whatever kids that are like 12 years old come over and a big group of people, they're all really, really stupid. They do a lot of dumb things. And uh, I was just kind of hanging out with them because my mom asked me to. Just keeping an eye on them, making sure they weren't burning the house down. And there was one girl in particular that he had invited to his birthday party that was acting way too mature for her age, you know? Like, when a 12-year-old acts like they have a 401k and a whole ass retirement fund, it's just a little weird. You don't actually have the ability to, you know, retire. You're not an adult. You're literally a 12 year old chillax okay like listen you know if you're 12 years old and you want to act a little bit mature that's fine but this was a 12 year old who was sitting there talking about how she was so excited to go to college and how she was so ready to be an adult and i'm like you have six more years okay we don't even know if you're gonna get into college yet Ch calm down and it wasn't i'm excited to go to college and learn how to do my career no it was i'm excited to go to college party get wasted every night and then have to try to wake up for classes the next morning like th that's what this girl was talking about at a 12th birthday birthday party, all right? So instantly, I was like, this girl's a little strange. She's definitely gonna be a troublemaker, but, uh, it was entertaining, I'm not gonna lie. And that's gonna be important in a second. So whatever. The other day, my brother comes home. We're sitting down for dinner as a family. We're gonna hang out, have a good conversation, just do that stuff that bros do, you know? Yeah, we were eating some Popeye's chicken. That's not relevant to the story, but I just thought you guys should know that because, uh, I, I like chicken. And my brother, as I'm eating, a whole drumstick goes, oh yeah, there's a girl at my school who's pregnant. And my brother goes to this weird hybrid high school school thing where it's like yeah there's middle school and high school in one campus so I was like oh like a high schooler and he goes no 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 remember Shalissa it's gonna be her name for the story for my birthday party last year and I'm like yeah and he goes she's pregnant I was like yeah but but she's 13 and he's like yeah I know and at this point the chicken drops out of my hand my drumstick hits the floor five second rule don't worry I picked it back up and ate it all right don't don't be panicking at all trust me I did not waste any chicken in this situation 
And I'm like, what do you mean she's pregnant? She's 13 years old. That's that wh what? And he goes, yeah, because him and her are friends, I guess. And he starts telling me the story. And, and I'm basically going to parrot it from him. Like, from now on, it's what my brothers told me. But uh, this is what has been said to me about the situation. So I guess at lunch, she walks up to them and says that she's pregnant. And there was a rumor going around, but they didn't know who it was. So basically, he's like, oh, okay, I guess she's pregnant. And she starts telling them that it was on purpose. She purposely tried to get pregnant with her 16 year old boyfriend's child that's right imagine being 16 years old and you're dating a 13 year old that's already kind of weird but it gets weirder when she goes get me pregnant and you go yeah all right cool i never wanted to do anything with my life anyways like could you imagine sitting there at 13 years old and wanting to have a child I guess she was talking about how her parents weren't taking her seriously and weren't treating her like an adult, so she decided to have a kid, which is the most immature thing of all time. Like, oh, you know, mom and dad aren't taking me seriously. Better have a baby at 13 years old. That'll make them think that I'm an adult who makes mature decisions. Just kidding. Now they think I'm an idiot because I'm an idiot. But that's what she opens up with, is that she did it on purpose because her parents weren't taking her seriously. And, and I just want to take a minute to ask the 16-year-old boyfriend, what are you thinking dating a 7th grader, dude? This girl is in 7th grade, and you're a whole, almost a junior in high school, and you were like, yeah, this is legit. I feel like this is a good plan. What? What? I, I don't understand what's going on in the year 2019, but I swear we went backwards, all right? Like, it's basically mid the medieval times right now. But regardless, here's a girl who's pregnant with a child at the age of 13 with her 16-year-old boyfriend, you know? Uh, the boyfriend has only been able to have a job for three months, so I don't know how they're going to plan to take care of this kid. But hey, who needs to think of the consequences? Just get pregnant now. Think about it later, all right? When the baby's out, that's when you start making decisions. Maybe you could shake the baby around a little bit, bang its head on a coffee table whatever it is you got to do just do anything to help you think about how you're going to take care of this child you know because clearly there was not a lot of thought put into what you were going to do with the kid once you had it before you decided to get pregnant you absolute idiot like uh, i get accidents happen accidents happen you know when you're 13 there shouldn't even be a chance for an accident you're 13 years old calm down slow it down you don't need to be having a child especially on purpose okay let's just chillax with the whole baby making situation when you're in seventh grade if you're not in high school there's no need to be doing anything even then, just, just don't have babies. Anyways, my brother keeps telling me that now she's really upset because people in school are making fun of her. And you know, uh, I, usually I would feel bad, but, um, it, duh, duh. You know, I feel bad for people who are getting bullied that don't deserve it. Like, if someone's bullying you because you collect coins or whatever, you don't deserve that because it's just what you're into. If someone's bullying you because you're a dummy who got pregnant when you're 13, you kind of deserve it. As far as things to get bullied about goes, that's kind of up there with, well, well, I mean, it's kind of fair. Maybe you should have gotten pregnant at 13. And before anybody in the comments is like, bullying's wrong. No, bullying is not wrong. Bullying is perfectly fine as long as there's a valid reason to do it. And getting pregnant at 13 is a perfectly valid reason to make fun of someone and I'm not going to apologize for speaking the truth. That's just the facts and if you don't like the facts I can't change them. It's just how it works. Anyways, I guess she had gone to the principal and complained about the bullying so they had a whole assembly with all of the 7th graders talking about how it was wrong to bully people for lifestyle choices and just happened to use the example of a pregnant girl which you know, I why are you snitching first of all like maybe someone should have snitched on you when you were trying to get pregnant We could have prevented this all but realistically the, the dean's office was like, okay Someone's getting bullied at our campus Let's use the exact scenario that the person is complaining about because that won't make it obvious at all who snitched like You know how dumb the school has to be you're just gonna make it worse at this point So whatever I guess this girl is due to have a child in like seven months is complaining about people making fun of her And is uh, very 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 upset at the fact that people are not supportive of her pregnancy Okay, like she's posting on Instagram my brother showed me that like if you can't stand with me in this situation I don't want you to stand with me at all and I'm like okay so just because people aren't so stoked that you're pregnant at 13 you're gonna cut them out of their life you can't handle no toxicity in your environment realistically the people that are upset that you got pregnant at 13 are the people that actually care about you anybody who's sitting there like you're gonna be a great mom no you're not you don't know why you're not gonna be a great mom because you're still a child a kid can't take care of a kid okay you ever tried to set up a babysitter but permanent 
permanently like you know the babysitter that lets you kind of do whatever you want doesn't have many rules just kind of a, is a free-for-all on whatever you want yeah, yeah yeah imagine that as a mom forever the kid's gonna have like 90 cavities by the time he turns one he's gonna eat chocolate for breakfast that's what we're gonna be seeing here for this kid but no no guys if you're making fun of her for being pregnant at 13 you're the toxic one you're the one who makes bad decisions her 16 year old husband is gonna do a lot of good work guys I guess her dad is also pressuring the 16 year old to marry his daughter which I might be able to understand you know if she was a little older or he was a little older but uh you're gonna make your daughter get married at 13 because she got pregnant by choice what what <laughs> this entire situation gives me anxiety this is the type of story that makes me never want to have kids like if my 13 year old daughter came home after dating a 16 year old boy and was like yo i'm pregnant by choice i wouldn't be like oh you gotta marry him i'd be like oh my god can i disown you is it too late for me to do that can i just cancel my parental abilities here also what type of parent lets their 13 year old daughter date a 16 year old boy i've been a 16 year old boy I don't ever want anyone that I know to date a 16 year old boy because 16 year old boys are uh you know I'm not gonna lie I was one but but they, they only have one thing on their mind and it's definitely something near getting pregnant but regardless I, I really don't want to know how bad this kid's life's gonna be like I really 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 cannot imagine having a 13 year old mom when I was 13 I was the most immature kid I was doing nothing but skating and getting in trouble literally all day so I I literally cannot I I'm saying literally a lot because I just ugh. Oh my gosh. Pregnant! Pregnant! A child growing inside of you when you are a child! What is happening? You also kind of got to blame the parents. Like, how bad is your parenting to the point where your 13-year-old daughter is getting pregnant? Like, you never taught her to, you know, if you're silly, wrap your willy? Like, let, let's be realistic here. I, 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 I really, really got to blame the parents, too. There's no situation where this ends up good. <laughs> So when I was in middle school, of course, there's a couple weird kids. Everybody's going through puberty. Everybody's a little bit grumpy. Everybody's just not getting along that well, you know? And that's part of the hustle of middle school. Everybody's awkward. No one's happy with themselves. And because of that, there's a lot of bullying that goes on. And I'm not much of a bully in real life. Yeah, I talk crap on the internet, but I feel like that doesn't really count, you know? It's like half crap talking if you do it online. Cyberbullying's not real. Close your eyes. Go outside. Do anything. But trust me, complaining about how you're being bullied on the internet isn't real. Whatever. But real life bullying can can do some pretty bad things to kids And there was this kid named Dylan who got bullied more than anybody in our grade mainly because he was pretty weird He was actually really good friends with the kid who ate the goldfish and really good friends with Melvin later on So this guy was a little bit weird definitely not the type of person that you would want to hang out with You know throw a party with invite to parties or talk to and people were really really cruel to this kid I'm not gonna lie and instead of responding in a positive way He would be really mean back which isn't what you do when you don't want people to make fun of you like if somebody goes Ha ha you're a nerd and you go, this is why your dad's dead, Derek. They're just gonna like you even less, and Dylan didn't seem to realize this. So, you know, Dylan was getting pretty roughed up a little bit, and I never had any beef with Dylan. He never did anything to me, and I'm the type of person where I'll leave you alone if you leave me alone. We're not gonna have any issues unless you cause an issue with me. But I had an English class with Dylan and a bunch of kids that were just known for being jerks. They would make fun of everybody, mainly because they were too insecure with who they were as people. But anyways, they would give Dylan a really hard time, and I don't know what was going on in Dylan's life, but obviously it was taking an impact because he started to get more and more hostile. Like, whenever people would at, like, be mean to him or mess with him or whatever he would just start yelling and like i said that example of at least my dad's not dead yeah, yeah that, that was actually something he ended up saying one day in class so dylan started to get in trouble for outbursts which is just a bs way of saying he was trying to defend himself from bullies and the school was too lazy to do anything so I, I think Dylan had had enough, and one day these people were messing with him, and they took off his glasses and threw him across the room. A cloth across. And Dylan didn't like that, obviously. So Dylan does what any normal human would do and stands up and is like, dude, what the hell? And the kid says, yeah, you're not going to do anything about it, Dylan, you weirdo. And Dylan was kind of an old, a weird, weird, weird old kid, just a little bit. But I don't know, this is just kind of messed up. You don't throw someone glasses across the room and then go, what are you going to do about it? Like, I don't know, I wouldn't have to do anything if you didn't throw my glasses across the room, you dick. Like, oh, look at me, I can throw eyewear across the world. What, if you're a baseball player, do you go to eyeglasses world for pitching practice? I don't think so. You're just kind of rude if you're gonna go out of your way to throw someone's glasses across the room and then get that at them for being upset. Like, oh, this is ridiculous. Can you believe that Dylan's upset that I threw his glasses across the room? Yeah, maybe a little bit. I might be able to understand how that would be a smidgel frustrating. And by a smidgel, I mean a lot of frustrating. So Dylan and this guy are going back and forth arguing. Obviously, Dylan is a little bit annoyed by the situation. And then it starts escalating he gets to be more physical they're pushing each other and dylan says and i quote f it 
Except he didn't say F, he said the naughty word, the stinky, stinky, naughty word that I can't say, or Susan will take away my green chips. And I'm a leprechaun, I gotta collect my green chips. And uh, flips over a desk. And when he flips the desk, the teacher is now not knowing what to do, because when people flip a desk, your first reaction as a teacher isn't, I've been trained to deal with this situation. In teacher school, when they're teaching you how to do math and stuff, you're not sitting there like, um, if a child ever vigorously flips a desk while screaming swear words, what do I do? Do I lightly tap him on the shoulder? and say hello. So Dylan is understandably pissed and the bully is kind of shocked because uh, you don't expect a kid to flip a desk whenever they annoy you. So he backs down but she has to call the dean's office because you know Dylan did just flip a desk in the middle of an English class. That, that is a thing that has just happened. So obviously after the flipping, 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 I'm gonna call it the flipping occurs. Dylan gets taken to the dean's office, gets suspended for a few days and I felt really bad for the kid. I don't think you deserve to get in trouble if people are messing with you and you try to defend yourself but that's how school works. For some stupid, crazy, bizarre reason, everybody feels like it's just totally cool to never fight back if someone's bullying you or doing anything rude, and that's just really not nice. Today I'm going to talk about skipping school, alright? I know a lot of you guys are in school, you know, you're really living lavish out there in math class. Just the most exciting thing of your life. You got a boner so big you can't stand up in front of the class. Whatever it is you're doing in math class is not really any of my concern. If that is your problem, you're kind of weird. Numbers, you shouldn't like that much, alright? It's normal to like numbers, but that much, ooh, you're kind of pushing it a little bit. Regardless, I was never a big fan of school after uh, my junior and senior year. I actually almost didn't graduate because I skipped so much school. So I have a little bit of experience with this and someone DM me on Instagram the other day and asked me to talk about skipping school and if you have anything that you want me to talk about any stories any topics that you want to hear DM me on Instagram and I'm definitely gonna start looking over there just what we can talk about you know now by no means am I saying that you should skip school if you're gonna do this you got to think it through logically here first you need a good excuse because the chances of getting hot are actually pretty high. I've been caught quite a few times, and every time, there's only one approach that you can use to get out of trouble for skipping school, okay? It's real simple, it's real obvious, people just don't think it through enough. Look, with anything in life, especially with skipping school, you just have to act confident when you're delivering your excuse for what you're doing and why it's wrong, and, and you'll usually get out of it. One time, explicitly, I was skipping class and I was in the teacher's lounge because usually during class there's nobody in there because, you know, they're supposed to be teaching. But regardless, that's where I was going to hang out and play Clash of Clans for the hour. This is a while ago, I know I'm pretty old. And a teacher walked in and he asked me what I was doing, and so really quick, without missing a beat, I just said, oh, I'm printing some copies off for my teacher, Mr. Lux. And he said, all right, okay, yeah, yeah, seems fair enough. You don't want to come up with a crazy excuse, okay? You're not saving the Pope, you're not doing heart surgery on a mafia member, no, 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 don't aim high. You want to scrape the bottom of the barrel, because when a teacher hears that you're just making copies, no one's going to think, I bet you he's making that up. They're not going to question it, because it sounds legit. So if you are going to skip school, have an excuse in your head ready to go, okay? If you're going to the parking lot, you forgot your homework for Miss Swift's English class, or whatever it is. Have a specific story that's specific enough to sound legit, but also not too crazy where people start to doubt that you're telling the truth, you know? And like I said, I'm not saying that you guys should skip school. Go to class, pay attention, do your homework, all that stuff. But I'm also not an idiot, and I know kids aren't gonna listen to anything that I say, unless it's about how to get away with skipping class. So regardless, you know, whatever. That, that's an excuse. That's what you need, okay? Now some stories of me skipping school, okay? Me skipping school live in lavish I, I would usually skip school to go do something dumb whether that's getting food or just overall not wanting to go to math class or whatever it was so generally we would leave class you know do our thing and come back to school and this is the tricky part too there was this lady that would sit outside of this hallway and for some reason if you were a delinquent who was always in trouble she was cool with you she wouldn't question you like if you were you know punching kindergartners in the face and then kicking them in the shins for giggles she'd be like oh whatever I'm not gonna question where you just were but me who was like captain of the debate team nerdy mcnerds a lot over here every time i would come past her she would ask me for a hall pass where i was and everything so what i did was pretty slick all right when i was skipping class i had an english teacher by the name of miss swift she's a really great lady uh, what a best english teacher i've ever had and her and i got along really well and uh, i would ask to go to the bathroom in her class and she said yeah yeah you can write yourself a pass which was not what teachers were supposed to do and there was this thick pad of bathroom passes probably about three thousand of them you know anyways i ended up taking when she told me to write myself a pass to go to the bathroom like a hundred of these bathroom passes a whole stack I told her that she was out and she got new ones so I had a bunch of hall passes 
in my uh, in in my backpack, which I would fill out whenever I needed to get past this angry security guard who was a sentry unit, okay? Like, if I was walking, she'd be like, tall white kid, attack, six o'clock, and just come beelining over to me and be like, where's your hall pass? I know you're snitching. I know you're skipping class. The only problem is they weren't signed by a teacher, so I needed to come up with a way to get them all signed by somebody. So I went to my debate coach, and I told him that Miss Swift's hands really hurt, and that she couldn't fill out her own passes, which sounds dumb. You're like, Ryan, that sounds stupid. But Miss Swift had this condition when it was cold where her hands would swell up and she wasn't able to write very well. And a lot of teachers knew this. And of course, everybody knew I was close with Miss Swift and Mr. Lux was the other teacher I was close with. So he just assumed it was cool. So he ended up signing all these passes with his name. And so now I had a hundred bathroom passes that had another teacher's signature on it, which basically meant they were get out of jail free cards. At any point, I could just bounce like there was no tomorrow. And uh, after this, I'm just going to give you guys some perspective. I ended up getting these bathroom passes with the signatures about, you know, halfway through my senior year. So towards the end of the second quarter. And uh, I had about four absences at the time. And with these passes, I ended up racking up. And uh, this is no joke, 47 absences by the end of the year, which meant I was not in class more than I was in class. All right. And that's pretty embarrassing, but it's true. And uh, this, of course, caused some problems. You see, I thought skipping school was all fun and games. I had bathroom passes. I thought I was going to get away scot-free. But uh, when the dean's office started to look through and realize that, um, you know, I was missing more school than I was going to, there was some problems. Problems. And this is in my senior year. So I end up getting a letter in the mail sent to my house addressed to my parents saying that I'm not going to graduate high school. And uh, you know, my parents are understandably upset because nobody knew I was skipping school because I had passes. But uh, I, I guess I didn't write notes. And when they realized that I was only missing certain periods that I didn't want to go to and they started to put a pattern together, they were pretty quick to realize that uh, I didn't go to school because I had these passes. So what I'm saying is if you're going to skip school, understand that there's going to be consequences. But anyways, my parents are understandably pissed because um, if I don't graduate high school, it makes them look bad and my life won't go anywhere. <laughs> I ended up dropping out of college a little bit later, but that's another story. Anyways, I have to set up a meeting with the dean's office to try to explain where I've been, what I've been missing, and you know, I don't think they're onto my whole bathroom pass scheme. I don't think they've put two and two together. And my parents have to come because they want to talk to my parents about my unruly behavior. And I'm not 18 yet at the time. I was like 17. I was turning 18 in like a week and a half. I was really close. But regardless, it was not a very good situation for anyone to be in. And uh, I really thought I was going to get away with it. I thought I was going to have no problems. Only because who was going to realize that I had all these passes, you know? And that's when my arch enemy sentry security guard lady who was always stopping me and yelling at me because I was skipping class. I walk in with my parents and Miss Swift, Mr. Lux, and the security lady are sitting there with the dean of my school and they all look really mad and I'm like, oh, this is not good. This is really not good. So uh, as I sit down, the dean opens up with, Ryan, we have a couple of questions here. Uh, the security guard has noticed that you've been skipping class with a pass every day that is signed by Mr. Lux, but when she described the pass, they're yellow, which comes from the English hallway, and uh, Miss Swift is your English teacher, so we were just wondering if you could explain Explain this anomaly to us. And so I smile, and at this point, I know I'm busted, all right? I know when the game is over. If you're gonna be a risky man, you gotta know when it's time to come clean and admit that you messed up. So I say, look, listen, I pull out the hall passes for my backpack. I only had like 12 left. And I say, this is where I've been. This is what I've been using. I took them from Miss Swift. She had nothing to do with it. I told Mr. Lux that he was going to sign it. I don't want them to get in trouble. Because my biggest fear was that my teachers were going to get blamed. Because I did care about my teachers. Yeah, I was an idiot and took advantage of the passes. But I didn't want my teachers to get in trouble for a mistake that I had made. Because it was my fault. I didn't want anyone else to get blamed for it. I come clean, tell them that I lied, tell them that I did it. And the dean is like... You know, I'm very disappointed in you, blah, 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 blah. But I could tell by my explanation about why I didn't want them to get in trouble that Ms. Swift and my debate coach were pretty chillax. They didn't mind as much. They didn't care as much because they knew I was doing the right thing. I was owning it. Regardless, they were still a little bit mad, obviously. Uh, they definitely were not too happy with the fact that I had lied to them and gotten him to sign, you know, 100 passes for a teacher that had a condition that made her hands hurt when she was cold. And, uh, you know, took advantage of stealing her bathroom passes. But regardless, our, my relationship wasn't affected. We were still friends. I still email them sometimes to this day because they're just really cool people. But the security guard lady, oh my lord. She starts going on and on about how I can't be allowed to get away with this and how I should be held back from graduating because it's not fair that kids like me are let off whenever we do something wrong. And I'm like, bitch, you're a security guard. What, what do you know about education? What do you mean I shouldn't graduate, all right? What, what do you protect the hot Cheetos in the vending machine? What do you mean I shouldn't be able to graduate? 
graduate. And my parents don't like this lady very much because he's obviously trying to prevent their son from graduating. So obviously the dean calms her down and he's just asking me, you know, how many classes do I miss? What have I missed? All this stuff. And he says, well, of course, this is a weird situation. I never had this happen in all my years of being a dean. And I'm like, oh my God, I'm not going to graduate high school because I messed up and took bathroom passes. And so the dean basically says that he's going to check my grades and the classes that I had been skipping, I still was passing pretty well. I wasn't failing. Like I didn't have straight A's, but you know, I wasn't doing bad. And uh, he, of course, you know, asked my teachers what they thought. And they said, of course, I should be punished. However, they didn't think I should be held back from graduating because I had worked hard. So my punishment was I had to stay after with Miss Swift and Mr. Lux. And I had to clean their rooms and just generally be their little slave for a couple weeks after school, which was way better than not graduating. Don't get me wrong. I'm not complaining. The punishment I got was not equal to the crime. I probably should have gotten in more trouble not been able to walk at graduation, all that stuff. But regardless, you know, this is the situation. We're chilling, living lavish. I'm okay. I ended up graduating on time. Moral of the story is, be careful with how much you're skipping school because while it might be fun, it's easy to get away with. It will catch up to you if you do it too much and you don't want to sacrifice your education. Education is important as much as you're going to pretend it's not and everybody hates the fact that they have to go to school so much. Uh, but, but you do learn important things and skipping school is not always the best decision. Obviously, it's okay to do it sometimes in moderation. I just got a little bit carried away. It almost didn't graduate. So this takes place in my freshman year of high school. I'm not gonna lie, I was a, a, a bit of a terrible person in my freshman year of high school. I just thought I was really cool and edgy and I definitely was not the type of person that you wanted to hang out with. Uh, but, but the one thing I was good at was I was good at school. I would always keep my mouth shut. I never wanted to have any beef with teachers because I just learned the hard way that when you have beef with teachers, it's really, really hard to get away with anything. It's really, really hard to get good grades. Like it's just way easier to keep your parents off your back, keep everybody off your back and have teachers on your side. So because of that, I was a, a bit of what they call a kiss ass, all right? I definitely went out of my way to make sure teachers liked me because like I said, my life was easier when everyone liked me. But uh, when I was a freshman, I had this science teacher and his name was Mr. I, I actually think he got fired after me. So Mr. Spangler, if you're watching this, I'm just gonna say your name. His name was Mr. Spangler and he was a, uh, a science teacher. I was taking physics at the time, which I probably shouldn't have been taking as a freshman because I didn't know what was going on. You know, I was pretty good at math until the alphabet started getting involved, X7. Q, X times gravity, whatever. Like there was not even numbers at this point. Forget all that. But regardless of how hard physics is, Mr. Spangler and I just did not get along. And it was for a simple reason. He was actually the dumbest teacher I've ever met in my entire life. Like you would think a teacher would have some, some type of logic and understanding of like how to be a smart person. But no, 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 no. Mr. Spangler was so stupid. I'm not even kidding you. He would spend 20, 30 minutes at the start of class trying to figure out how to turn on the projector. Like that's how dumb this guy was. No joke. One time I come into class and he is sitting there smacking his computer as if it's like his child or something Maybe him as a child that would explain a lot Maybe a little bit of the brain damage just smacking the side of this computer saying work 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 And so I'm asking him what's going on and he says my phone connection is really slow And I know it goes through the computer and I look at him and I'm like dude the, the, the phone has nothing to do with your computer you have an iPhone This is a piece of crap school district Dell. What, what do you what do you think's going on here? But of course I was wrong. I didn't know anything of quite it he was a science teacher, all right? Because I'm sure knowing high school physics makes you an expert on technology. But regardless, I watched this man beat his computer senseless, all right? If it was a boxing match, the computer would have been KO'd in the first round. And he's just beating on it and looking at his phone and waiting for the text to go through. Because he didn't realize that you, it, that, that's not how texts work. It's not how phones work. You can't beat your computer to make your, your phone work. It's like breaking your TV because your Xbox is being slow. But that's the type of stupid that this guy was, really stupid. But uh, regardless, he, he really thought he was a great teacher. He thought he was changing our lives, all right? And I was not learning physics. I was having a hard time. And of course, it's really hard to respect someone that doesn't understand that a computer and phone don't do the same thing. So uh, re regardless, him and I would kind of get into it every now and then. The first time we really got into a verbal altercation, like a straight up argument, was when he claimed that uh, the sun actually is not a ball of burning gas, but instead... And I quote, it's kind of like a toaster oven in space. You know how when a toaster oven gets hot, it turns red? And uh, I mean, I watch Science Channel, all right? And I knew that wasn't how it worked, so I tried to correct him. And he proceeded to try to make me look stupid in front of the class and looked it up. And sure enough, the sun is still a burning ball of gas, guys. Wow. Oh my gosh. Physics. Physics. But anyways, after that, he had it out for me. And when I mean he had it out for me, I mean he really had it out for me. I would answer questions and he would tell me they were wrong. He was giving me the wrong formulas for math tests. He was going out of his way to make sure I was not doing well at all. Like, that was his one goal. He, he would basically go out of his way to make sure that I was not learning the information, like, good enough to pass his class. And any excuse to get me in trouble 
level he would. Like, if I was talking too much, or in his opinion, talking too much, if I was asking dumb questions, if I was being a distraction to the class, which is basically anything I would do. Like, if I would breathe funny, he'd be like, wow, you're trying to distract the class. You're not a comedian. Go to the dean's office. And it got so bad that I would go to the dean's office, and they'd ask me what I'd do, and I'd be like, honestly, I don't know. That they would call him and ask him to explain it, and they could tell that something was off, because he would always be like, yeah, he was screaming something about blah, blah, blah in the class. And like, usually when kids come up here and they know they've done something wrong, they're pretty honest about it. And it was basically I, every other day, I was going to the dean's office two, three times a week from this guy's class. Then it got to the point where they would be like, all right, well, I guess just sit here for the next 20 minutes and uh, I, 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 there's not much we can do. We can't send you back, but we know you're not doing anything. So just sit in here and finish your physics homework, I guess. Like even the dean's office knew that this guy was full of crap and basically just trying to get me in trouble because he didn't like the fact that I proved him wrong about the sun. Maybe the problem is, he never had a son. He never had someone to raise to be a physics-loving man like himself. But the real culmination, other than his disgusting bald head, was the following. So he already didn't like me, and I didn't like him. That was pretty obvious by now. And he had a really, really, really gross bald head. And it was no secret that we didn't like each other. I was getting sent to the dean's office every day. I'm failing his class. Whatever. So I did something a little bit immature. And when I mean a little bit immature, I mean a lot immature. He was balding, but just couldn't let it go. So he had these three hairs on the top of his head that were really dark. Like three groups of hairs, I should say, on the top of his shiny bald head. So I decided to make a Twitter page called Spangler's Three Bald Hairs, and I got a bunch of really, really zoomed in pictures of his bald, decrepit head, this chrome dome, greasy noggin that he had with his three little hairs. And I just started tweeting as if I was his hairs, you know, like somehow I'm a decrepit hair and I'm still smarter than the guy I'm attached to, just that type of stuff. And uh, some snitch told him that this was a Twitter page. So of course he's going crazy trying to figure out who's owning it, who's running it, who's trying to find on the Twitter page. He starts trying to search kids' phones in class, which is just against the rules. And uh, somehow, I, I don't know who snitched on me, he found out that it was me. Uh, but, but I kind of knew that it was coming just for how hard he was searching, so I had deleted Twitter off my phone. So one day I get called into the dean's office, they're basically like, do you run this Twitter account called Splangler's Three Bald Hairs? And I was like, no, 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 no I have nothing to do with it. And then I'm like, they're like, oh, are you sure? And I said, yeah, you can even check my phone. So I pull up Twitter and I'm like, see, I'm not logged into the account. The only account I was logged into was my own. And so I'm smirking. He knows I got away with it because what are they going to do? They can't prove I was on the Twitter account. Like they can't prove that I run it. It's not on my phone. But he knows that I did it because of the smirk I had on my face when he realized that I had gotten away with it. Because when I walked in, he had this cocky look on his face like he had me. Like he had finally gotten me in real trouble. And when they didn't find it on my phone, he knew that I was doing it because I was smiling like an idiot. I mean, how could I not? I outsmarted a physics teacher, okay? But this is where the trouble really started. So after this, the gloves were off. He knew that there was basically nothing he could do in the dean's office to get me in real trouble. He knew he couldn't pin the Twitter account on me, but his ego was bruised. So what he started doing is just failing me. And he was somehow pretty smart about this. He wouldn't just give me straight up zero percents. He was giving me D's and F's and C's just enough to lower my GPA to the point where, where I was not going to get any credit for the class. And I was going to have to take summer school. And I know he was doing this because it wasn't just me failing. Because up until this point, like, yeah, I was struggling with him as a teacher, but I had had an A or B the entire year. And then it was literally after this incident, the week later, I just start failing every single test. So I decided that I'm going to try to catch him, right? Like, I'm going to try to make sure that, you know, he has nothing but ill intent. Because, you know, maybe I am just feeling the class. I don't know. I don't want to assume bad things about the guy. So I figured the least I could do is, is, is come up with a plan. So I decided to take my friend's quiz. And I, I know he got an A because he had cheated. And my quiz, and we just swapped names. So my quiz had his name on it. His quiz had my name on it. He gets my test back and has an 89%. I get his quiz back and I had gotten a 64% or not me, but him. And he had cheated. So I knew all the answers were right. So I go up to him and I ask him, Hey, can you tell me what I got wrong on my 89%? And he goes, Oh, that must've been a grading error. My student aide graded it, takes it back. An hour later, comes back to me like towards the end of class and says, here's your paperback. And now I have a 67. So at this point, I basically confirmed I'm not failing the class. He's just trying to fail me. Like he's purposely trying to fail me. So I ended up doing some research and I realized that he teaches summer school. So I go up to him a couple of classes later, like at the end of class, and I tell him straight up, I say, listen, dude, I know you don't like me. I don't like you. That's obvious. I know you've been trying to fail me. I don't want to have to go to the school about this because you're going to get fired because I basically have proof that you're trying to fail me. And he's like, oh, I'm not trying to fail you, totally denying it. So I say, look, I know what you're trying to do. You're trying to get me to go and have to retake the class. And he goes, yeah. And I'm like, there's only one problem. You teach summer school and you're the only physics teacher here, which means you're going to have to deal with me for the next year or three months or however long it is that I have to retake this class. 
and we hate each other. That's not gonna work. And I, uh, he was so stupid, I don't think he realized this. And he kind of has this wide look in his eyes like, oh my god, if I keep failing him, I'm never gonna get rid of him. He's gonna be here forever. But uh, after that, I got a straight C average for the rest of the year, passed the class, and got my credit, which, you know, I wasn't gonna complain about. Sure, it ruined my GPA a little bit, but I'll tell you what, it's a hell of a lot better than having to retake the class with a teacher you hate over and over and over again. Uh, him and I would see each other in the hallway up until my junior year, and we just would give each other dirty looks. We hated each other. But uh, from what I've heard, he actually got fired last year for uh, hitting on an underage student. So as you can tell, he was just a big class act. What a nice guy, you know? The type of person you're really, really happy to be around. So it's been a long time since I've had a teacher, all right? I want everybody to know that out the gate. Uh, I'm actually a college dropout at this point, but um, it's, it's, been a, it's been a while since I had like a teacher teacher. This is actually my professor finding my channel, which might be worse because college professors actually can like kick you out if you do something they don't like. But uh, m most teachers can't. But anyways, um, yeah, this is my college professor who actually found my channel. There's a little bit of backstory that I got to get into, so we're going to do that first. I definitely was not the best college student. I very rarely went to class. Like, I definitely was not a fan of going to class at all. But there was one teacher in particular, a professor, that I really, really got along with. And him and I would talk pretty often. We had a lot of movies that we found really similar. And the thing I did in college is uh, it was like the special program where we would just accelerated learning basically and one of the main things we had to learn about was like movie situations and and how you know movies impact culture like that was a big part of it so having something in common with him like movies was a really big deal me and him talked a lot we got along really really well but uh, whenever I needed advice, like, I usually go to my dad, but he wasn't there, so I would go to him, and he just helped me a lot. Like, at the time, I was really struggling with going to college, because my YouTube channel was taking off, and I just didn't feel like I was getting things done in college. Nothing about college just, like, spoke to me, made me feel like I was getting anything done. So I would go to him and just kind of ask for advice, and he, obviously, being a college professor, was like, college is the best thing ever, but uh, I, <laughs> I ended up going against that advice, starting to focus on YouTube and just business and just... Things that I didn't really feel like I needed a degree for. So there's the backstory. That's how me and him are close. That's how we're friends. But now we're going to get into, you know, the whole situation of uh, him, him finding my channel. So I kept in touch with him. He actually added me on Facebook when I left school. And he just hadn't talked to me. I don't think he knew I left school, like, right away. So, whatever, uh, he sends me a message on Facebook, like, a month ago, and it's like, Hey, Ryan, long time no see, how you doing, how you hanging out, everything going good, what are you doing these days? And so I tell him, you know, I dropped out of school, he's like, I'm so sorry to hear that, you were such a great student, I really wish you would have continued, and I'm like, yeah, whatever, man, like, co college is cool, uh, that's another story time that we'll get into later, but, um, stay in school, kids, stay in school, that's what matters, be like Little Pump, Lil Pump stayed in school, that's really important, but, uh, he's like, you know, the other day, I, I found this, this channel that looks a lot like you, and he links me Scrubby, and it's, like, my face, and I'm like, oh, yeah, and he goes, well, I just thought it was something you were doing on the side, but, uh, I, I watched a couple of your videos, and it's not my cup of tea, but my kid was watching you, and your voice just sounded familiar, and I'm like, oh, okay, and he goes, and then I found this channel called Scrubs, and I didn't know that you've, You've, uh, you've done a lot of these things because obviously I'm not going to go to my college professor and be like, yo, college professor, I was, I was making out with mad chicks, you know, like, it's just not something that comes up in conversation with a college professor at all. Let's be realistic here. So when he calls me out and is like saying that he watches my story times, I really didn't know what to say. Like, I don't know what to tell adult. Yeah, I'm a professional cyber bully, which is why I'm not going to school anymore. Like what in the world are you supposed to say when somebody that, you know, look up to and is like kind of an authority figure is just chilling, doing what he's got to do and is now watching your story times every day. I don't know. Uh, regardless, he tells me he subscribed to my channel and that he just, you know, didn't really know that some of his students had such hidden talents. And I'm like, hidden talents? What? What? You think this is a talent, bro? I play Roblox and talk about my life. This isn't exactly a talent, but but thank you. You know, I appreciate it. Uh, and he says that I should probably stop bullying people, though, because he doesn't like it. And I'm like, yeah, I mean, um, I, I would, but people really like watching it and I like doing it. But thank you. And um, and then obviously we, we talked about some other stuff, we talked about his kids. And then the question comes up. He's like, so do you really like YouTube? Like, is it something you want to continue? Uh, my son's a YouTuber. Is there any way you could like give him some lessons? Which is, parents have asked me that before. YouTube's not really something you could teach someone. You can't go to a kid and be like, you know, um, this is how you clickbait really good. This is how you're entertaining. I don't know. It's just something you can't, you can't really teach people. Like, you have to learn from experience. You just have to make a channel and do it. Uh, but regardless, it was a pretty chill conversation. I really expected my teacher to get really mad and be like, ah, you're a bully. But he didn't. So that, that was pretty, pretty chill. I was pretty uh, surprised with the results of it. So Davis was known pretty much after the time he ate the goldfish as the weird kid that ate the goldfish, obviously, alright? Anybody that sticks their hand in a fish tank 
pops that bad boy in their mouth and choo choo choos definitely deserves to get a little bit of ridicule for it like basically our entire grade called him goldfish kid well into high school by the time we were juniors seniors in high school he was still known as goldfish kid you know and uh of course davis being davis he decided that he just really needed to get everybody back for all the harassment he's gotten over the years you know because responsibility for your actions definitely isn't there I, I don't know why he was getting made fun of guys i can't think of a possible reason that the kid who ate a goldfish would be getting harassed in high school who would have thought you know that ever it'd be possible for somebody to be made fun of for doing something dumb so davis decides that because it's our end of our junior year beginning of our senior year that he's gonna pull a great prank and the prank is gonna be that he's gonna get a ton of cups cups full of water and put them in the school and then go to walmart and get goldfish for every cup I don't know why. Like, this kid's brain is so behind that he's just like, okay, they make fun of me for eating a goldfish, so I should put a bunch of goldfish in cups in the middle of the hallway. So whatever. Davis has this plan in his head that he's gonna fill the hallway with cups full of goldfish, which which is just a bad plan. It's not gonna work. Especially Davis, you know, th this kid couldn't figure out how to not eat a goldfish, so I seriously doubt he could figure this out. But that was his plan. That was his plan. And the only reason I know it was his plan is because during the uh, my senior year, I worked in the dean's office, so I would basically get the tea on whatever drama was going on, whoever was in trouble, I basically got it because uh, the women in the front, you know, love me. I I'm a charming guy, you know, I'm a good storyteller, so all the women in the front office would be like, oh, Ryan, did you hear what's going on with blah blah blah? And I'd be like, no, Deborah. oh my lord, please tell me, I want the tea. I was basically the James Charles of my high school, alright? I always had the tea, you could always count on me to get it for you. Don't doubt me, just know this is what happened. So, of course, Davis is pretty infamous, and one day I come into the dean's office to go to my aide class where I would help him with, with everything, right? And, uh, they go, hey, last night there was a kid arrested on campus, and the police found some really suspicious stuff in his car. So I'm thinking, you know, oh, it was probably, like, heroin, or, you know, the, the latest issue of Benji's uploads, whatever. Like, some real suspicious stuff that no normal person would ever want to have or watch. And they start telling me about, it's this kid, and, and they describe him to me, and they tell me what he has. And I guess he had bought, like, 3,000 red Solo cups, which is just a lot of Solo cups, you know? That's, that's a pretty large amount of cups to just be carrying around like there's no tomorrow. So the cops are already like, that's odd. Oh, oh, and how they caught him, that's important to the story. Um, so the school obviously has an alarm on it because they don't want people breaking into the school at night and there's like computers and stuff in the school, so whatever. They have some stuff ready to, to prevent the school from being broken into. And, um, you know, so if you're gonna break into the school, if you have a plan to set up cups and goldfish, you'd think you'd find a way to get around the, uh, security system. But what Davis decided to do is when you would break a window on the school, because yes, he broke a window, the alarm would go off and it would make a noise. He decided that he was just gonna cover the thing that was making noise with a rag, and then the alarm wouldn't uh, alert anybody, you know? Like, as long as it wasn't making noise, the alert wasn't going off. That That's the type of brain that this guy has. Oh, no, the alarm's going off. Stuff's a rag in it. All right, cops definitely have no idea now. Now, it's not like it's hooked up to a computer system, but as you guys could probably tell from the story already, Davis is not the sharpest tool in the shed. So whatever, the cops come and they see the broken window on the outside of the building, and then they see flashlights kind of flipping around uh, in, in the school. So they're like, okay, someone's in the school. So they go in and Davis has a flashlight and he's setting up these cups full of water throughout the hallway. The only problem is the floor in the hallway is soaking wet because instead of setting up the cups first and then filling them up with water, Davis was going back and forth from his truck to the hallway with like three cups at a time. This kid was so dumb. I do not understand how somebody this dumb somehow managed to put this together in his head. But regardless, the floor is soaked and they're like, what are you doing? And he goes, oh, I'm trying to pull a senior prank. And they're like, well, why did you break the window? Like the alarm went off. He goes, no, 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 the alarm didn't go off. I covered it. And they're like, what? what? That's not how alarms work, buddy. But regardless, so they put him in, uh, in handcuffs and they go to his car and they see that there's like more and more and more cups. Just cups and water and like the entire truck is filled with cups and water. But then they open the car door and sitting there is a giant tank, like a giant tank full of baby goldfish and goldfish. Like he had basically gone to Walmart and bought all the goldfish that they had. But basically, this guy had become the adoptive father of half a thousand goldfish, and I, I don't understand what the plan was here. Like, let's break this down. Okay, you break into the school, fine. Somehow you turn off the alarm, fine. You're doing a whole Ocean's Eleven's bank heist just to pull this prank. But you're mad at people for making fun of you and calling you goldfish, kid, and bullying you because you ate a goldfish in seventh grade. So your plan is to, to put a bunch of goldfish in cups 
and then that'll teach everybody a lesson about friendship. I don't know what type of Sid the Science Kid looking ass plan this kid had in his head, but it was not going to work. Like, none of this made any sense. Even at the time, I was like, this was really stupid. I don't know what he expected to happen. Obviously, people are still going to make fun of you. In fact, it might make it a little worse because now you've just committed goldfish genocide because these fish were definitely going to die. But regardless, that was his plan, whatever. So he's telling the cops this whole thing and they're like, all right, well, we're going to have to take you in on destruction of property, but your principal's office and stuff is going to have to take care of the other punishment because obviously he's going to get in a little bit of trouble at school for breaking into the school and spilling water all over the place. I just feel so bad for the janitor. Like, imagine being the janitor and coming in and having to mop up half a hallway full of water just because, you know, goldfish-eating kid decided to pull a real nasty, sick, nasty prank invasion prank, you know, kissing his sister, not clickbait. But regardless, I'm getting all this information from some cute little chubby old woman in the front of my school's office who's like trying to, you know, get give me the information that I need. And so I'm telling her about what's happening in, from seventh grade and like why this kid is so weird. Because her biggest question, she's like, why the goldfish? I just, I don't understand. I've heard of the prank with the water cups, but the goldfish is just a weird touch. So I'm explaining it to her and then she goes, so how is he going to get away with it? And I'm like, yeah, well, I don't know. He obviously didn't think that through. She's like, no. Everyone would have known it was him because who else would put a bunch of goldfish in a cup? Like obviously the kid who's known for eating goldfish would be the one doing the prank where there's goldfish on the floor And I'm like damn that that's kind of a good point. This kid really did not think this through Wow, uh, you know Deborah's out here being a true crime investigator All right, who needs Sherlock Holmes when you have Deborah the front aid office lady? All right That's what I'm letting everybody know from now on all you crack FBI teams out here trying to figure out where the memes are coming from You got it all wrong. You need to go hire Deborah from my old senior class dean's office because she'll tell you everything you need to know she'll break it down she could catch some serial killers but this was at the start of my senior year so we weren't close to graduating or anything but the punishment that davis got was obviously he had to pay for the um window but but here's the real kicker uh, Davis had turned 18 the week before and for those of you who aren't American basically anything you do that's illegal before you're 18 kind of gets wiped away after you turn 18 so you can kind of do a bunch of dumb stuff before you're 18 and, and it won't be on your permanent record but if you do anything after you're 18 well then you're screwed so of course Davis decides to do something illegal you know vandalism destruction of property a week after he turns 18 so on his permanent record he now has a bunch of like charges and you know a, a criminal record whereas if he would have done it just a week earlier he would have been fine and it wouldn't have been that big of a deal but of course davis doesn't think this through i'm sure he's having a hard time getting work whatever he wasn't allowed to walk at graduation because of this and the best part is the best part he, he didn't even get a prank off like it's not even like he got caught after we had all seen the prank the cops had the water cleaned up and the janitors had the water cleaned up before school even started the next day so all that trouble all those goldfish all that money all that effort and uh, he didn't he didn't even get to prank anybody like our senior class didn't even know that it went on The only reason that I know about it is because I was in the front office when the deans were dealing with it So realistically this kid did all this all this effort for literally nothing and you know I I've dealt with some stupid people in my school days. All right, there was Melvin the lizard kid There's Davis the goldfish boy and and somehow somehow they always surprised me with how stupid they could be by just not thinking things through But uh, yeah, that, that's that's the other story I have about Davis, you know his super awesome some revenge prank that went really wrong and only ended up getting him in trouble. What a sick play. 500 IQ, obviously. You know, they say fish kind of makes you smarter. You know, it has mercury in it or whatever. But uh, something tells me that this kid only ate that one goldfish ever. Like, was never a fan of sushi. Because if he did eat food that was supposed to make him smarter, it really didn't work. Or maybe I'm wrong and he was just so dumb that it takes more than just one goldfish to make him smart. You know, like the offset of how stupid Davis is just didn't really work out with anything else. Like, that was the only possibility that he, he could have ever had.